guys, it is Miss Stace. I am back again today with another Friday PIP, which is our Pinterest inspired project. Today we are making a really fun and easy Halloween decoration. We have a little mummy made from a can. Then we have a pumpkin, a ghost, and a Frankenstein, and those are made out of wooden spoons. All right, so the first thing we need is a can. I just have an old green bean can here. You wanna pick up some wooden spoons. We got a four pack from Walmart. They're the Mainstays brand, 88 cents. And this one's nice because it does have that flat top, which is perfect for Frankenstein. You will need orange paint, green paint, and white paint. And I have all those over here. We're gonna first go ahead and paint our spoons. I'm gonna bring in a piece of copy paper here and grab your spoons. I am gonna cut mine down a little bit. They were a tad bit too big for my can. If you're using a taller container, you can certainly leave them the way they are. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna cut maybe, I don't know, three inches or so. And I'm just using my Tim Holtz scissors to cut these guys down. And just kind of snap them. Okay, so that was our Frankenstein. I want him to, be, him to be the tallest. Then we have the pumpkin. We're gonna make him be a little bit smaller than that. So maybe about right here. And then we'll see how they are when we're put them in the can. Okay, and then we have our ghost. Which will be a little bit shorter than that one. Okay, go ahead and cut them down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of dry fit them in my can here. Make sure I like the way they look. And I do. All right. So we have our green one with the flat top or the spoon with the flat top. That's going to be our Frankenstein. And I'm going to paint them all the way down. And you want to do a really thin coat. I mean, it is wood, so it does absorb the paint pretty quickly, but I still like doing a real thin coat. This way it dries extra fast. I'm going to do both sides. Really fun for the kids to get involved with this one. You should get the sides as well. Now I did not add bolts or anything to my Frankenstein. You know, you can of course figure something out for that. And I also have some black and um, orange construction paper. I just cut that in strips to kind of act as filler. All right, now that it's all painted, I'm just gonna take my brush and just kind of get off all the extra paint. That will hold dry pretty quickly for us. All right, that one's done. We can set him aside with our other one. Let's grab our white paint, and the ghost was our smaller one. Or you can make the pumpkin the smaller one. Now my white paint took a little while to dry, so I'm gonna go extra thin on it. They also sell white spoons, you could use those as well, then you can eliminate the white part of the ghost. Just paint the other ones the color you need for the Frankenstein and also the pumpkin. I'll lay it down here a little bit easier to paint it that way. I'll make sure you get them all the way around. You see, I'm trying to go as thin as possible with this paint. For some reason, the white takes a little bit longer to dry. I think it's because it's an outdoor paint, I think. You can also spray paint them as well. And they're Halloween. You know, they don't need to be perfectly covered. Okay, the white one's done. Now let's work on our pumpkin. And again, I'm going to go nice and thin. The projects I see on Pinterest completely amaze me. Like, who would have thought to make a decoration out of regular old kitchen wooden spoons, you know? But really fun. So again, your spoons are going to vary in size depending on um, the can you put them in. But I thought I already had a can. Then I thought the, the can looked plain. I thought I'd be just, you know, covering it with black pattern paper or a Halloween themed paper. But my can, I only, I only have a six by six pack of the Halloween paper. 
So I thought, we'll just cover it, make it a little mummy. Okay, so again, I'm gonna kind of get off as much paint as I can here. Make sure I get the top of the pumpkin with a spoon. Okay, that's the longest part, waiting for those guys to dry. All right, while that's drying, let me grab that little piece right there. All right, while that's drying, let's go back to our can. I'm gonna put this someplace over there. All right, now my can is four inches tall, so I went ahead and cut a piece of paper, four inches, and I just chose a brown. This is four by 11. Again, go ahead measure your can. I'm gonna put ATG on both sides of it. And just kind of wrap it around. I'm just kind of lining it up the best you can. It doesn't really matter. We're going to be covering this guy anyway. All right, so we have all that on there. Now to make the mummy, we're going to be using that same gauze before when we did the um, cover the mason jar with the gauze. Same thing. I already went ahead and cut mine in half. I'm going to bring in my ink and I'm using tip top coat. It's like a grayish ashy color from Stampin' Up, but any kind of brown ink you have is fine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab all of my stuff here. Now all I'm gonna do, I wanna have this look dirty, so I'm gonna lay it down on a piece of scrap paper, take your, take your ink pen, and just kinda stamp right on it, just to make it look not so white. You don't want to pull it, otherwise, well, I guess you can a little bit here and there. Otherwise, your gauze may unravel. If you don't want to use gauze, you can certainly use, you know, white paper just or white cardstock. Just cut it in strips. So it's really fun and really easy. The hardest part is waiting for the paint to dry on your spoons. I think I use the whole thing. You can buy gauze at the dollar store, dollar general kind of thing for a few bucks. And you're, you'll be cutting in half, so you're able to make two cans. All right, a little bit more right down here. And then we're good with our mummy guy. Okay, let's close our ink up and get rid of all of this stuff here. All right, let's bring our can back over. I'm gonna get a cut off this wad I got here right there. Okay, now I'm gonna start on the bottom. And just kind of stretch it around the can really, really tight and grab that other piece and just kind of crisscross it. That way we don't need to worry about it coming undone. I mean, my first can you'll see is much darker with the um, gauze because I did take a little sponge and did it that way, but I thought this is just as fine. You know, just so it's not that stark white, that stark white rather. So keep on going all the way around your can. Go in different directions, then we're gonna put googly eyes on it. You can also just roughly wrap it, you know. I don't want to fast forward this part because it's rather tedious, but we're going to go with it. And tomorrow is what? Saturday. So tomorrow, Hubby and I are going to go to a pumpkin patch. I could not find one, or he could not find one. He was out driving around. I'm like, did you see a pumpkin patch? He's like, no, you know. Um, so I was just going to go to the store and pick up a pumpkin, but that wouldn't really be fun, you know. So I went on Facebook and I asked around and there is a pumpkin patch down one of the churches, so we're gonna go there tomorrow. I'm gonna take you guys along with us, pick out our pumpkin, then bring it home and carve it. It might be a tad bit too early to carve it. What's today's date, the 13th? Oh, it's Friday the 13th today. Yuck. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna continue this around. And you wanna kinda work or end at the bottom or top of the can so we can kinda tuck them in. Okay, 
so fairly easy, right? Just go ahead and find a spot, make it nice and tight, and just give a little tuck right there. You can also take something and kind of shove it in there to push that gauze up. And just kind of bring it around. Then just choose which side you'd like to be the front. I think I'm going to go right here. So all I do is kind of come in here and separate the gauze a little bit with my fingers. I'm going to cut some as well. Not with those scissors. They won't cut nothing them, them guys. Okay, just take, just to kind of cut a little bit there. So I can separate it so you can see the brown behind them a little bit. All right, now we got a hole there. That's where his eyes are going to go. So I'm going to get and take my glue gun. I think that hole needs to be a tad bigger. And yep, that was the pumpkin. Spoon on the floor. Now they got the dogs barking. All right. I'm just going to put some glue in here. There we go. All right, and grab your googly eyes. Super cute. All right, let me grab this. All right, so Mr. Pumpkin is dry. Okay, just make sure in there. Pretty cute, right? All right, now our spoons are dry. Let me just go ahead and test. This is how I test to see if things are dry. Okay, the green, not so much. Let's check the white. Okay, we're getting there. I'm gonna grab a wipey and clean my hands. Yeah, great for the kids. So you can always paint the spoons. Oh, you know, I would do that first, like we did here, and just do a really, really thin coat. All right, we got our hands somewhat clean. Now we're gonna take a marker. Now you can either use the in part of the spoon or the outside, doesn't really matter. And we're just going to draw a pumpkin face. Now if your paint's not all the way dry, it might be kind of difficult to draw on it. Just draw a triangle, another triangle, upside down triangle, and then the mouth. Isn't that cute? All right, he's done. Let's try our little ghost guy. Last time my ghost took a long time to dry. We're gonna go ahead and try it. Just make a big circle. So great for little ones, they'll learn their shapes. You know, triangles, circles. And then just draw a... Ooh. Okay, now we got Frankenstein. Let me see. I think we're good with Frankenstein. All right, so here, all I did was just draw hair at the very top. I'm gonna make this hair a little bit longer than my first Frankenstein. And if you find your marker, like my marker's not writing all that great right now, just go ahead and kind of rub it off to get the paint off of it. Okay, and then just continue on. And it's hair, you know, so it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to do the kind of the top of the spoon here. You can also use, I'm guessing, you know, probably Crayola markers, but I probably recommend a more permanent one because I think the Crayola would might just rub off. All right, I'm not going to do his eyes because we're going to do his googly eyes. His mouth, um, I'm just going to go, I'm going to draw. Just so like a line, I think, this time, like that. And then just draw lines through it. Because my first Frankenstein did like a pumpkin mouth. All right, so I got that part done. I'm gonna put the lid back on that. And again, when you're done, just kind of wipe off the marker a little bit so you can use it as a marker again. Now I'm taking a finer um, marker, black marker, to draw, I guess, the scars from my marker. Again, if your marker's not writing, just kind of write for it and just go real slow. Okay, so he has a scar there. Now his mouth looks like a scar. 
and then I'm going to do one over here. Okay, that's what that looks like. Hope you can see that. All right, now again, back to the googly eyes. Let me grab my googly eyes. I just keep them all in a little container. I'm going to grab the smallest I have here, which are those, I believe. All right, back to our hot glue gun. And I'm just going to put an eye or dot right there and one right there. Okay, plop the eyes on. The hardest part is picking them up. Okay, so we've got one there and one there. Okay, I think the eyes make it. I'm just going to get all the glue. Isn't he cute? Now he looks like a Frankenstein. All right, we are done with all the paint and all the mess. Let's go ahead and get rid of all this stuff over here. All right, back to our can. Now you can put whatever you want in it. Um, I prefer raffia, but I didn't have any, so I went ahead and took some construction paper, just your regular old paper, and I cut it in strips. I just took, I want to say four pieces, and I folded it in half, and then cut. But I think I'm going to take this mesh part from the bag, that the spoons came in and just kind of use it as a little bit of filler. All right, now we're just going to take this and crinkle. Okay, then uncrinkle it and put it in our can. Really, really cute. And I'm not gluing the spoons in, so you can always put the spoons someplace else. Like we did at the Toddler Tuesday last week with the puppet Scarecrow. You know, you can certainly put these little guys in, in plants around your house or wherever you want. So you can use the mummy for something different and the spoons. And again, if you don't want to create the mummy, you don't have to. You can just use a Halloween type theme paper or stamp on it. Okay. Alright, now it's just a matter of shoving our little guys in there. So we got our Frankenstein way in the back, standing tall, our little pumpkin, and our ghost. Super cute, right? All right, there you, there you have it, my friends. This is our um, Pinterest-inspired project. Now, again, Pinterest-inspired means I've seen the idea on Pinterest. I kind of put my own twist on it. But, of course, you can copy it right from there. I will have that link or the original pin on my blog. Okay? Get the little hair back in there, or the confetti or paper. All right, guys, there you have it. Our Pinterest inspired project, super cute. There's the one we, we made, and there's the one I made earlier. And you can see the spoons are just in there all loosey goosey, which I like because you can kind of just rearrange them any way you like. Um, any questions, please let me know, guys. Any, um, as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you guys tomorrow at the Pumpkin Patch.